episode of Saturday Night Horror. Now we didn't have an episode last week. Uh, last weekend was WrestleMania, so I was occupied with that. But we're back this week, and honestly, I'm excited. Tonight we're going to be watching a movie that I've been wanting to see for quite a while. It's actually the sequel to Train to Busan, which I watched a few months ago, and I loved it. I thought it was freaking awesome. It was one of the best zombie movies I've ever seen. I've been wanting to watch the sequel Peninsula for quite a while, but now it's exclusively on Shudder, so I have the option to watch it. I'm finally able to watch it, and I cannot wait, man. Cannot wait. I have high expectations for this. If it's anything like Train to Busan, its predecessor, it's going to be awesome. Now, as far as cooking goes, I'll be honest, uh, I feel like some hamburger helper. It's not extravagant, it's not, uh, you know, five-star cuisine, but it is good eating. And uh, I'm going to put my own spin on it a little bit, just a little bit. We're going to make hamburger helper beefcake style, which isn't a big difference. You'll see what I mean. But yeah, man, um, I think this is going to be an awesome night. Our movie, Peninsula, in the kitchen, we're making hamburger helper. I think it's going to be a really good night. So without further ado, let's go in the kitchen, let's get the food started so we can watch our movie. I'll see you in there. Alright everyone, here are our ingredients for our hamburger helper. Of course we have our meat, obviously. We have two boxes of pasta, because I like my pasta to meat ratio to be off the charts. I want a lot more pasta than meat. So I always use two boxes of pasta. We have water and we're also going to use milk, but I've got it in the fridge until we need it. Now the pan has been heating up. We're going to start by cooking the meat. All right, we've got the meat in here now and it's eh, a little frozen. It's been out all day, but just a little bit of it is still frozen. So hopefully it doesn't take too long to cook. It usually doesn't. <clears throat> so yeah, right in there, it's kind of frozen. But it'll be fine. We'll cook all the meat. It shouldn't take too long. So yeah, let's go ahead and get this started. Let's go ahead and start chopping it up. You know me, I like to chop it up. Alright, so we got the meat going. And as I said, you know how I am. I will chop this meat the entire time it's cooking to make these pieces of meat as small as I possibly can. I cannot stress enough how much I do not like huge chunks of meat. It's got to be small, man. It has to be small. So like I said, this should not take too long. We'll just keep on chopping. All right, the meat is done cooking and we're going to drain that grease out. We do not want the grease in there at all. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, the grease has been drained. The meat is cooked. It's time to add everything else in. First, we're going to put in our, mm, excuse me, we're going to put in our water. Good Lord. <laughs> all right, we've got our water in there. Up next, yes sir, our milk. We're going to pour our milk in there. And I always keep the milk in the fridge until we need it, just so it can stay in there fresh and cool. Alright, we're going to add our two boxes of pasta here. Now, funny note, I'm using the measurements for water and milk that you would, that you would use with one box of pasta, and it still turns out perfectly fine. Alright, we're going to add our... Uh, I guess flavoring saw or sauce or whatever. I don't know what to call it. The, um, having a brain fart right now, but we're going to add the two bags of that. And we're going to mix all this up. Alright, so we've added everything. Now we're just going to mix it up. And I'm going to try to be careful not to uh, dump anything out. I usually make a mess in one form or another here on Saturday Night Horror. But we're going to try not to do that this week. Uh, so far so good alright I think we're doing well we might have a mess free night here on Saturday Night Horror alright so everything's mixed up and now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn the heat down and I'm gonna put this cover on the pan and we'll let it cook and I'm gonna check back on it from time to time just to make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom of the pan alright so back here to check on it Oh yeah, it smell. Man, I wish y'all could smell this. So not quite done. I just scrape it up here. Don't want it to stick to the bottom of the pan, so we stir it around. And I'm just gonna keep doing this from time to time, maybe every 10 minutes until um, I'm happy with how it looks. I'm happy with how it's cooked, how that sauce is, you know, basically cooked into the pasta and the meat. 
So yeah, I'm just going to do this every 10 minutes, just check on it, and we'll see how it's doing. But it usually does not take too long. Put the lid back on there. All right, it's done. I'm happy with how that looks. The majority of that sauce has cooked into the pasta and the meat. That is going to be some good eating. Let's get this on a plate. All right, we have got our plate. Oh yeah, look at that. That is going to be awesome eating right there. It looks good. It smells good. And daggone it, it tastes good too. So let's go out front and watch our movie. All right, we're out front. We're on the Shutter app. Peninsula is ready to go. Man, I cannot wait. I've been wanting to see this for quite a while. You know what? We forgot to do the mandatory Jurassic Park movie poster shot. I completely forgot. So Scott Crusher, I apologize, my friend. I'll get it next week. All right, everyone, the movie is over. And man, that was awesome. Uh, Peninsula, Light Train to Busan, was one of the most fun zombie movies I've ever watched. It definitely lived up to my expectations. It had some goofy things going on, which we'll talk about, but overall, Peninsula was freaking awesome, man. It, it, it was an awesome night. It was a fun night. We had good food, a good movie. You can't ask for anything more here on Saturday Night Horror. But Peninsula, <coughs> excuse me. This movie takes place four years after the events of Train to Busan. The zombie outbreak is pretty much running rampant over this uh, part of Korea. And man, there, there, there's a whole peninsula and island just zombie infested. A whole huge city which is basically a dead zone. Uh, you don't want to go there, to, sp to put it lightly. Unfortunately, there are people living in the city, so you know it's lawless. Uh, anything goes. People are taking advantage of each other while trying to avoid the zombies it's oh man it's awesome hey Bella Bella just walked in here with her stuffed fish she loves that toy <laughs> but the setting for this movie I love this kind of settings the the post apocalyptic world the uh, it, it's just desolate the whole huge city is run down buildings are decaying buildings have fallen it's overrun by the living dead the few survivors that are there are just uh, basically turned to savages. There, are, there is no law. There are no rules. But I love the setting like that. I love seeing this huge, desolate city, or what's left of it, and it's overrun by zombies. Hey, stop, stop. Bella, stop chewing that. She's chewing my tripod, so if it shakes a little bit, you can blame baby Bella down there. Bella. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, I love seeing the settings like that, man. I love these post-apocalyptic movies where there's still people going around in this, what's left of the cities. It's, it's awesome to me. I don't know why, but I've always loved it. Now, I did say that there were some goofy things going on in this movie, and mainly what I'm talking about is the CGI that was used in this movie. Bella, please, you're killing me. Come here. Come here. The CGI in this movie, to me, was 50-50. All right, I think she's calmed down. Some of it was really, really good, and some of it was just absolutely laughable. Uh, the, the worst parts of the CGI, the laughable parts, were the driving scenes. Well, we had some of the characters driving in their vehicles, running over zombies, and that CGI just was... Wow, holy crap. It was laughable, and it was... Uh, I've seen worse, but I've seen much better. <laughs> Awesome CGI until they're in their vehicles driving. Then it just it looks like a sci-fi original movie. Uh, if y'all remember those, every Friday or Saturday night they have these goofy movies with horrible CGI. Just that's what it looks like when they're driving their vehicles. I don't know what it was, man, but they could not. Something about these driving scenes was just awful. The CGI, it's just, uh, wow, it was laughable at best. Other than that, man, um, excuse me, there really wasn't anything else to nitpick about or complain about, just that laughable CGI. Man, this, uh, I can't say enough good things about this movie. The zombies, now this is kind of weird and different, but I thought it was kind of cool, and it was the same way in Train to Busan. The zombies are basically blind at night. Now at night, they're nowhere to be found unless there's a source of light. 
And people use that to their advantage during this movie. If they wanted to ambush someone, they, they'd shoot flares up or they'd turn headlights on the vehicles. The zombies are attracted to light in this movie. So during the day, they are everywhere. During the day, you do not go out during the day. You hide. At night, you go scavenge for supplies and everything because the zombies cannot see in the dark. They're blind at night. And I thought that was pretty cool. It's kind of different uh, than most zombie movies where zombies move around during the day and night. So I thought that was pretty neat. And it kind of sounds like it won't work very well, but it does. Trust me. Uh, these zombies in Peninsula are the fast moving, the running zombies. Personally, I prefer my zombies slow, stupid, and just walking. But on a rare occasion, the fast running zombies work. And Peninsula was a case where this actually worked. This, uh, I don't know, some, some movies running zombies just don't make sense and it looks awful, but this one it really worked. Because you've got this whole big city to go through, and they're chasing you down as you're driving, and I can't I can't explain why, but it worked. Uh, the cast in this movie, believe it or not, uh, I didn't completely hate. <laughs> now you know me. When I watch a horror movie, usually I really don't care about the cast. I'm like, you know, live or die. I don't care. Hopefully die. It's just whatever. But this is a likable cast. It really was. Um, I was actually rooting for most of these people to survive and somehow find a way off this peninsula into civilization and safety. And that's very rare for me when it comes to horror movies. Like I said, most of the time I just don't care about the cast. I just hope they... Usually I hope they die. But if they survive, I'm like, eh, well, you know, who cares? But yeah, very likable cast in this movie. Uh, I said a lot of good things about Train to Busan. A lot of people think Train to Busan was better than Peninsula from what I've been reading. I'm in the opposite camp. I actually think Peninsula was better than Train to Busan. I actually enjoyed this a lot more, which is unbelievable because I enjoyed Train to Busan so much, but I actually enjoyed this one more. And I liked seeing how, I guess because it shows what in the future how things turned out. And I like seeing that in Train to Busan, you kind of see the beginning of this uh, zombie apocalypse in a peninsula. You see years later what's happened, how it's affected this area. And I thought that was pretty cool, man. So I, I, I like that. The other thing I liked about this movie, and it's kind of a problem for a lot of zombie movies and zombie shows. The zombies in this movie were never an afterthought. They were never... A background piece they were never just there to be there they were the main focus of the movie along with this uh, lawless camp of humans it wasn't one of those things where it becomes human versus humans and the zombies are just an afterthought the zombies are just there you know as extras they were front and center of the entire movie and I love that I absolutely hate when a zombie movie and a zombie show Walking Dead I'm looking at you Abandons the zombies and just go moves on to human versus human where humans are the heroes and the villains and the zombies are just Just there. I mean, they're, they're just there. They're a set piece. They're extras. I hate that That was not the case with this movie and I loved it. I loved how the zombies were a constant threat in this movie This found a way to, to present the zombies as a major threat and these lawless group of humans as a threat equally and I like that I like how they never took the zombies for granted, how they never just got used to them, kind of say, like, oh, yeah, it's a zombie, you know, hey. No, they were a constant threat, and you had to watch yourself around them. I love that. So, all in all, Peninsula was freaking awesome, and I highly, highly recommend it. If you want to see a very good zombie movie, Peninsula is your movie. I would recommend watching Train to Busan first and then Peninsula so you can kind of get the whole story, see everything that's going on. But man, I cannot say enough good things about Peninsula. I love this movie. This movie was freaking awesome. It was such a good night tonight. Um, you know, I'm, I'm always happy when I have good food, an awesome movie, and that was tonight. So definitely check out Peninsula. Very, very highly recommended. I do not think you'll be disappointed at all. So with that being said, we are going to wrap this up. This is our return to Saturday Night Horror. We took a week off, but we're back.
and it was an awesome night. So with that being said, I appreciate y'all watching. I hope y'all enjoyed this episode. Definitely, definitely check out Peninsula. You will not regret it, I promise you. Y'all have an awesome weekend. Have an awesome rest of your week. And I will see you here next week for the next episode of Saturday Night Horror. Y'all take care.